You have just reached the area of YouTube that is full of fall festivities. Hey, I'm Veda. Welcome to my channel. Fall is upon us. She is nigh. From the moment you're watching this, it'll probably be a few days away or already here. Um, or it could be like summertime, who knows? We have to go full force and we have to make real life become a moody indie film about fall. I wanted to share my own bucket list, but also like intersperse some just like really great fall recommendations to kind of get you in the mood. I compiled a list of activities, movies, TV shows, music, all that good stuff to share with you so that hopefully we can both kind of like get into this cozy time and like snuggle up in blankets and watch scary shows. Hmm. I'll start with fall activities to do. One that's on my personal bucket list, which is dyeing my hair. I am going to become a ginger. No, I'm just kidding. Well, kind of, I guess, but like a brunette one. I know, it seems like it wouldn't suit me, but Brad says it will, okay? Brad says it will suit me, so fall personified. That's gonna be me in my next video, so stay tuned for that. It probably looks black, but it's like dark, dark, dark brown. When I was younger, it used to have like tinges of red in it, which I really miss and I wish I had that still, but the older I get, the darker it gets, so we're just gonna go artificial. If you've been wanting to dye your hair, go for it, baby. The farmer's market. I have a farmer's market near me. If you do, definitely go there. Get some fall fruit, get some fall vegetables, get some gourds. If you don't have any of this, just go to the grocery store and buy like corn and gourds and like, I don't know, stone fruit or something. Have a picnic outside and read books on a cozy blanket with cozy drinks, like a little, a little, I was gonna say a flask, but that's, it's not right, is it? What is it called? Like a, like a, the, the, the thing, thermos, thermos. Have hot, like hot cider or something, take some treats spooky treats because snacks make everything better. My candles are melting rapidly, I'm so sorry. Leave some book recommendations for like very fall vibes. I really wanna read Ray Bradbury, but I cannot find his books at like the secondhand store, which is like where I get all of my books from. But if you have any recommendations for fall related books, please leave them below. I'm definitely gonna do this one. This sounds so fun. Tell scary stories, candles all around you in the dark with a friend, with your family. That is so fun. It will scare you just enough, but you won't have like the visuals of like, well, I mean, you could because my ma my imagination is quite vivid, but you know what? It's probably better than the visuals of a horror film if you can't handle a horror film, but you still want to get spooky. It's engaging. It's like stimulating. I'm going to be carving apples, carving apples. I'm also going to be carving pumpkins, which you should also do. There's actually like so much significance to carving pumpkins. It's like something that's been done for centuries. And the significance of this is because during Samhain, when the veil between our world and the spirit realm is the thinnest, so spirits are walking the earth, people would put them outside to not only scare off evil spirits, but also they would put the lantern in it to help guide, guide the spirits along in their journey through the physical human realm, which is, I think, so amazing. So definitely carve a pumpkin and put it outside. I saw this video of this person, they were carving apples and then they put them in the oven and then they put them in apple cider and they're like floating little shrunken apple heads and, and apple cider, it's so cute. I'm so excited to do this and then drink that apple cider while I'm like watching movies. I just cannot wait for this. I cannot wait. Then obviously the ultimate fall thing you can do, and people say this is basic, but like a, a season activities, hobbies, interests, they're not basic. It's just being a human with interests. If you're a human with no interests, what is that? Tell me what that is. You should try and stay home as much as you possibly can, but a corn maze, or a pumpkin patch is an open space that's so large that you're probably not gonna be close proximity to other people. I actually looked up when the pumpkin patches around me are gonna be opening. They are only ad 
allowing tickets to be bought online because they're only going to be allowing 50% capacity onto the farm. So there's gonna be like sparse amount of people at these fields and they're quite large. The corn maze is, you're literally secluded in the middle of corn. So I think it's a pretty safe bet. Obviously wear your masks still, even though you're out in the open, wear your masks, just be safe still can have fun and still can go pick some pumpkins or go through a corn maze which i always love doing that it's so nice and it smells so quintessentially fall like rotting corn yes please i love that okay next i'm going to be telling you about shows i don't want these to sound repetitive so i really hope you find something new that you've never heard of before i'm gonna start from kind of fall to like extreme fall Okay, so number one, kind of fall. I'm not okay with this TV show on Netflix. You've probably watched it. If you haven't, go check it out. It's quite endearing. It's about like this young girl who... It's got the Stranger Things vibes because it's from the same makers. Lock and Key on Netflix as well is about this family. They move into this big house. It's been in their family for a long time and there are keys in this house it gives you some sort of power and obviously there's some villain who is after these powerful keys it's kind of spooky but it's not like it's not scary you're not going to be like hiding under a blanket and sweating from this show but it's a very intriguing eventful show the umbrella academy i feel like this is a bit fall because it's kind of like dark it's kind of got dark academia vibes honestly this family with powers wow I'm seeing a pattern here. Try and save the world all the time. It's great. Twin Peaks is an older show. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's like a murder mystery. It's like a detective show, but it's not very, it's not like a police show. It's like a detective, cool, like quaint and intriguing, obviously because it's a murder mystery. So Twin Peaks. This is my favorite show of all time. I have to mention it. If, if you know me already, you know this show and you are sick of me talking about it because I've been talking about it for years. Bates Motel, Bates Motel, Bates Motel. I've seen it like 10 times. I'm not even joking. 10 times probably. If you haven't heard of um, Psycho, yeah, 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 Psycho. It's basically a prequel to Psycho. Norman Bates and Norma Bates. A mother and a son, when the dad dies, they move to a new town and buy a motel. His mom is like very overly protective and she's like scared of getting him in trouble and like wanting, it's like, um, I don't know, it's problematic. <laughs> Basically, their relation relationship is problematic, which is why we love it so much right? Creepy, weird, kind of like questionable sometimes. You're like, oh, wait, what? But that's what's great about it. It's so weird. And Vera Farmiga, I love her. I love her so much. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna say this one, but I have to have a disclaimer with it because American Horror Story only, and I repeat, only Murder House, which is season one, and Coven, which is season three, I think. If you don't already know, it's not chronological. One season is all there is to a storyline and then it's over. Then the next season is a brand new storyline. Same same actors usually, but different storyline, different characters. So you can watch them out of order. They're kind of like movies. But yeah, Murder House I found to be the most Halloween vibes. Coven is obviously witches and honestly, a lot of the characters in that season really irritate me and I found very annoying. But when I watched it, it did lend to a very, very festive fall season. I don't know, I think it was American Horror Story that really did it for me, but also Fleetwood Mac, but what the, anyway. Spooky, scary horror TV show, Haunting of Hill House. Haunting of Hill House was way less scary than I expected it to be. I thought it was gonna be like freak me out so bad but it was it was spooky let me tell you it was it was scary family lived in this house hill house and bad stuff happened there and they leave the house and things seem to be like haunting them even when they're not in the house 
I don't know. I'm really bad at getting synopses. Synopses? That's, that's probably the scariest show that I have recommended so far. Classic. Charmed. Charmed, the old version. It's about three sisters. Well, kind of. They find out that they have, that they're, that they're witches. It's very cute. It's kind of like Doctor Who-ish, how it's, it's very cheesy, but it's very, very, it's supposed to be scary, but it's funny because it's so cheesy, but it's, but it's not cheesy. It's cute and quaint and cozy and a little bit spooky sometimes. And I just really love it. There's a turning point in when you get, when you get through a few seasons, I'm not going to say what happens, but something disappears out of the show with not very much explanation at all. And you know what? That thing was one of my favorite things about the show. And then it's just gone. So honestly, after that thing happened, I kind of stopped watching. I love Piper and Prue. Number one TV show to watch during fall. Gilmore Girls, obviously one of the most fall shows you can get. It gives you such a warm feeling inside. Warm, warm feeling. Lorelai Gilmore, it's just such a cute, mother-daughter show set during fall perpetual fall i'm gonna try and go a little bit more quickly through the movies because i'm talking way too much about these and i'm just gonna give you the list okay super eight it's about these kids who are making a movie stand by me vibes you'll like super eight spider wick that's one that i actually kind of forgot about and then i saw it on netflix and i was like that's a fall movie spider wick it's based off of the books and it's actually it's quite a good movie. And there's lots of dead leaves. Runaway Bride, it's about this woman. She keeps almost getting married, but then running away. She's the runaway bride. Along the same vein, You've Got Mail, very nostalgic for me. Mom, mom loves it. I also love it. When I think of these movies, I'm just like, dead leaves. There are dead leaves everywhere. These two people start chatting in a chat room. They don't know each other. They're getting to know each other online and then they finally meet in person. That's a modern love story. So ahead of its time. Nora Ephron, what a genius. E.T. The Extraterrestrial. So, such a good movie. Ugh. There's Halloween in it. The Others. The Others, I, I watched that a long time ago and I'm excited to rewatch it because I, I haven't seen it in so long. I forgot what happens. Ghosts. Casper. Ghosts. But for kids, but cute. Dan in real life. This is so cozy. How many times have I said that word? Who knows? It's like a family comedy, a little bit dramatic. Basically this family goes and has a little vacation like with their extended family and they stay at this little house in like Rhode Island or something by the water. There's a lighthouse. It's just, it's very cute and Steve Carell, I love that man. Honestly, it, it's weird to say this, but he's adorable. I love him. The Craft, obviously. Witch movie. What a classic, what a cult classic. Edward Scissorhands. What more do I have to say? Edward Scissorhands, watch that movie. Another Johnny Depp movie, Sleepy Hollow. It's got the spooky, the headless horseman. Yes. Practical Magic. It's about witches again, but this one's a bit, it's more of a family movie. Sandra Bullock, I mean. Sandra Bullock. That's all. Okay, and then this last one is like one of my favorite, favorite fall movies. I think it's very underrated. I don't know, I, I don't know if it's underrated, but I feel like it is because not enough people talk about it. Monster House. It's such a good storyline. It's just such a, a well-rounded movie and like the plot twists. If you haven't seen it, watch it. And if you have seen it, Watch it again. Okay, now we're getting to music, which honestly, music is one of those things that really shapes my mood. And if I'm wanting a fall spooky mood, just turn on music. You've got it. So these are, ju these are just very few recommendations for you to add to your playlist if you haven't already. Number one, Arcade Fire. I'm gonna put, I'll put a list of my favorite Arcade Fire songs right here. There's gonna be a lot of them. These are the ones that I love the most. Wolf Alice, really great. Arcade Fire and Wolf Alice are both kind of like... I'm, I'm really bad at categorizing. I think they're kind of like indie rock 
These next two people are not, I mean, they're like um, kind of obscure, but su okay, I'm gonna say Susan Sundfor, but her name is Susanna Sundfor, and Agnes Oval, both amazing. I would say Agnes makes spookier music, like it's kind of creepy. And then Susanna Sundfor, <laughs> I love saying her name like that, I don't know. I mean, it's like kind of dance electronic, but also organ, like spooky organ. They're both amazing and I love them both. Talking heads. If that's not your thing, hey, no judgment, but it's definitely my thing. I love the talking heads so much. Just love it. Here, I'll put I'll put like a list of like the most fall to me personally. I don't know if it's just because I would listen to them a lot in fall, so they remind me of that. There's there's my list. Okay, these next two, I'm gonna group them together because they're kind of both folk folk. I can't say that word. Folk or folk? Folk music? I just, I don't like that word. Fleet Foxes. And then First Aid Kit. Fleet Foxes is a male singer. First Aid Kit, female singers. Again, my favorite songs here. And you can hear it in the background too. The Cranberries. Her voice? The song Zombie? Like, that's literally autumn in a song. I, I mean, isn't it? Kate Bush. Classic, gothic, Princess? I don't know. Crazy voice. Cr crazy. If you're into like really obscure things, I mean if you're into ob into obscure music, I would say f definitely listen to these recommendations, but if you're not as like weird as I am, then maybe you won't like these things. Okay, these are like getting to the top of the list. Cocteau Twins. Cocteau. Amazing, beautiful, inspirational, makes me feel like I'm on top of the world when I listen to them. Graveyard Club. It's in the name, Graveyard Club, come on. William and Witchcraft are absolutely my favorite songs. I could listen to those on repeat, which I do. I do listen to them on repeat, but there you go. Now now you can also do the same. It's called Below the Salt by Haley Blay. The whole album, amazing. Firestarter literally made me cry. Like I was just minding my own business, doing my makeup one day and I heard it for the first time and I didn't even understand the lyrics necessarily. Like, it was just an emotion that overcame me and I literally started ugly crying. I'm not even exaggerating. Overwhelmed with emotions. <laughs> Alexandra Savior, her album, The Archer, and also Belladonna of Sadness, but I will put my absolute favorite songs here. Those are my recommendations and what I will be consuming this fall. I hope you added some of these things to your list because um we're really gonna we're really gonna amplify this this autumn. I know it's not been a great year but I think doing little things like this that make us really happy will really improve our mental states and our emotional well-being. Now that it's fall it's gonna be full force it's gonna be full force autumn on this channel so if you like that Please subscribe, please leave a comment. Honestly, you guys, I read all of them and they make me so happy. Thanks for watching and I will see you again. Bye.